Time now for our Eye on the Prize segment where we're keeping our eye on the prize. And in this case, that prize, well, hopefully we'll get it four weeks from today. It'll be election day for these midterm elections in 2022. And by the way, right here on Salem News Channel, we'll provide you live election night coverage from this studio in Washington, D.C. So make sure you're here for that. But we're focusing on a number of congressional races where we think a Democrat is going to be sent packing and a brand new Republican congressman is going to be part of that brand new majority. Joining us right now in studio is Maryland State Delegate Neil Parrott, who is running in the 6th Congressional District in yes. Maryland. Currently, uh, that's Congressman David Trone, is it not? It is. So uh, I want to get to him in a minute and, uh, and how he votes with Nancy Pelosi all the time, and you will not. But first, the politics of this, specifically your district and in the state of Maryland, it's actually kind of interesting. Everybody thinks of Maryland as a dominated by Democrats, and it, it kind of is, but not to the extent that congressional delegation reflects. Right That's now, right. there are eight seats, and seven of them are Democrats, one of them is a Republican. That's not the actual makeup of the populace in Maryland. Uh, there was a districting problem there, wasn't there? Oh, there absolutely was. They, Governor O'Malley, when he was here, mm. he drew the districts in a very bad way. Jerry Mannard, he said it in court, he actually said it in college campuses, he did it just to get rid of Roscoe Bartlett, just to get rid of the Republican, to make it instead of 62, 7 to 1. And they actually, I didn't think they could make it any worse. I, mean, <laughs> I serve as a legislature, I'm 12 years, a Maryland state delegate, and this December they passed a new map that was worse. It was going to make it seven and a half Democrat to a half Republican. Basically, Andy Harris was in very much danger. Of yeah, he's the one seat. man. He's the only Republican representing a, a district in Maryland. And he does a fantastic sure. job. Yeah. Very thankful for him. But so they tried to get rid of him. Uh, so I saw that map. This is ridiculous. So we sued. I partnered with Judicial Watch. We won that lawsuit. We said, look, you need to follow the rules in the Maryland state constitution, which says it needs to be compact, contiguous, respect political and geographical boundaries. When they did that, and the, the judge in the case, she said it was an extreme partisan gerrymander, sent it back to the legislature, said, follow your own rules and come up with a new map. Yeah. When they did that, now Andy Harris, thankfully, is very safe on the Eastern Shore. And my district, District 6, is up for grabs. All of Frederick County, which is a big county, is now in the Western Maryland Congressional District like it always should have been. So this is a very, very close race. Yeah, let's educate everybody because the 6th Congressional District, it was last in the news because Dan Bongino running for Congress, what, eight years ago now? 2014, that's 2014, right. 2014, he came this close to winning that yes. year if it weren't for this little wedge that they had carved out into a very heavy Democrat zone. And that was the point, right? Exactly. But now the district is different. If, if, if Dan Bongino had been running in this district, he probably would be a congressman as we speak. Oh, well, he would have won easily in yeah. 2014. So yes. this is now your district. It's very much Frederick County rural rural area um, and uh, Washington County, right? This is where you currently represent as a, dis uh, as a, as a, a state legislator. Yeah, delegate. Which, by the way, draws quite a comparison to your opponent, David Trone. Does David Trone even live in this district? No, he's never lived in the district. And with the new lines, he's 25 minutes to drive from his house, even just to enter the district, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. That's insane. So he can't vote for himself. No, he can't. The only time he voted for himself was in 2016 when he ran for Congress in his own district, District 8, and he lost that year to Jimmy Raskin in the primary. So what's he all about? He's very wealthy, right? He owns like uh, total wine and stores. Yes, total wine. Yes. Well, well, let's not give him an advertisement. There well, go. go ahead. He's going to go back into the wine business, so that's fine. That's right. Uh, he took all that wine money and decided he wanted to buy himself a house seat, and that seems to be what he did. That's exactly right. He tried to buy it in 16. He lost because we had a grassroots person who was a state senator, uh, the people liked Jamie Raskin, so they voted him in over David Trone, even though Trone outspent him 6-1. to one. Then he bought the election two years later, where he doesn't live, in District okay. 6, and two years later kept buying it. This year he's trying to buy it again. He's already put $12 million of his own dollars into this race. Yeah. I expect him to put $15 million when it's all said and done. Jeez. And he's using this money to lie and slander. It's really a shame to see a sitting congressman go to these extreme efforts that he's doing right now. Yeah, this is right outside Washington, D.C., so I get to see these ads that yes. he's buying. And boy, this David Trone guy, he looks like he works on a farm. He's standing in front of tractors. He's talking about the veterans and the military. He doesn't spend most of his time doing that. Most of the time, he's just sort of standing right behind uh, Nancy Pelosi doing whatever she says. Well, he has a 100% voting record with Nancy Pelosi and the Joe Biden. 100%. 100%. Nothing that Nancy Pelosi proposed in the last two years did he think, ah, maybe not. No, and it's really interesting. He says his main issue is fighting opioids and fentanyl, which I agree. We need to fight opioids and fentanyl. Best way to do it, of course, is to secure the border. But there was a, um, a bill, the import-export bill. An amendment came forward, and he had a really good chance to give the president some power. So they're sending us fentanyl. We can go after them. It only failed by four votes. Uh, and David Trone, he voted with Nancy Pelosi. Uh, 
and he killed that amendment. It was a real shame yeah. uh, to give the president powers. And look, the president's changed. So he would have given Biden power to go after people who are sending us fentanyl. Hmm. But he couldn't get over the Trump effect. He just wanted to be a partisan politician, which is yeah. what he is. And in fact, I remember some reporting during the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic where uh, he didn't even show up for work much of the time, right? Well, he's still not. It's really a shame. 25% uh, of the time that he's supposed to be voting in Congress, he's been sitting who knows where, uh, but not in Congress, and he's proxy voting, so he's allowing other people to do his vote. He's not, he's not even there. He's not voting. I don't think he Wait, even tells these what But he doing. lives, like, what, 15 miles from Capitol Hill? He's probably closer to Capitol Hill than he is to the district, so he should be there <laughs> voting. All right, so, so when he shows up to work, or when he votes via proxy, he's voting with Nancy Pelosi, which, of course, means voting with AOC and Ilhan Omar. Right. Uh, tell me, uh, your district, that, that's not how those people out, out in Frederick County, that's in, in, in where you live, that's, that's not how they think. That's not their politics. No, it's not representative at all of our district. And he's not listening to us. He doesn't do things that, that we need or want. Yeah. This is, uh, I've gone door knocking a lot, and I keep asking people, hey, do you think we're going in the right direction or the wrong direction? I've never heard anyone say, we're going in the right direction right now. No, it's yeah. the wrong direction. I ask them, what is the main issue that you're concerned about? And the one answer I hear most consistently, they even look at me like I'm dumb. Why are you even asking this? Hmm. It's the inflation. Yeah. It's I'm, everything is costing more than it should cost. We can't even get some of the goods because of the, the problems with transportation. Oh, yeah, the supply it, chain problems. But, exactly. You know, but when you're sitting on a giant pile of money in your basement from selling all those bottles of wine, uh, you don't feel the inflation. David Trone has no idea what the people are going through. None. He yeah. doesn't feel it at all. Uh, the gas price is going up. He's voting for all Green New Deal policies, mm. uh, and that's hurting our country. And even this winter, look, people don't see it yet, but the price of natural gas and propane, it costs three times what it cost last winter. And I'm afraid that's actually going to go up as we get into the winter based on world events and the fact that we're not drilling and doing the things we need to do here. So you're up against one of the wealthiest people in Congress, if not the, well, not the wealthiest, but he's in the top 10, I think. And Correct. so he's pumping all this money into his campaign, uh, obviously very concerned about you and about losing the seat that he bought with so much money. Um, how do you do it now? Because uh, clearly, first of all, you should give the website because you do need some donations. You need some help. Yes. Um, so give the website, but then tell us what's resonating. How do you go about fighting against a, a Goliath like that? So it's neilparrot.org, N-E-I-L-P-A-R-R-O-T-T.org. Please go there and make a donation. We can really use your help. We raised over $300,000 last quarter. Things are looking really good. We're going to get our message out. We've, we're saving it to make sure we can have a big bang and get the message we need. We just recorded a commercial. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, but look, Jamie Raskin beat him when he was out, spent 6 to 1 in District 8, where Sean actually lives, uh, because people like Jamie Raskin. And thankfully, I'm honored that people really do like me. And I'm, again, thankful for that. I've been a well, state they know delegate. you. You've been representing them for so long. And I live there. I work there. Yeah. I go, to, go to church there. So, yeah, for 12 years, I've been a state delegate. We've worked on many statewide issues uh, together with people all across the state. So the grassroots support for our campaign yeah. is just phenomenal. Yeah, and uh, Joe Biden, you know, when he said that, you know, two words, made in America, yes. that was out in your district. That was Hagerstown, Maryland, it and was. it was a campaign event for David Trump. They flew on Air Force One for what, 50 miles, I think, to That's get to right. the That's district. Right. But you're bringing out a big gun of your own, I understand, to come campaign for you. I'm very thankful. Just today, I learned that Senator Ted Cruz, he's going on a tour. Yeah. He's added Maryland to that tour just so he could campaign for me, uh, for Congress. Really excited about it. And one of the things that I think helps show him to come here yeah. is that Real Clear Politics had over the summer, they said lean Democrat. But just last week, they said it's a toss-up. Yep. This is a very, very close race. I'm very thankful for Senator Cruz's help. And uh, that's going to be on the 22nd of October. Excellent. That's why you're here, by the way. It is a toss-up, and we think you have a good chance of winning. But people need to know about it, and people need to get out real fast, just 30 seconds. Uh, should you win, what committee do you want to sit on? What, what really sort of uh, drives you when you get to Congress? Transportation and infrastructure. I'm a traffic engineer, so I'm, I'm a regular guy. People, when they vote for me, I'm not, they're not voting for an old multi millionaire. They wrote for a person that's of the people and will represent the people. And I want to make sure there are a lot of infrastructure problems that we need to fix, north-south routes yeah. in the area, I-270, even just coming here today, I'm stuck in some traffic. Um, but we can help take care of some of that, All right. and I'm looking forward to it. Delegate Neil Parrott running for Congress, Maryland 6. Uh, he's going to be part of this red wave. Republicans are going to win. The question is how big. And if it's really big, it's going to happen because of Neil Parrott. More to come on O'Connor Tonight.